So, uh, what do I make of all of this? Um, let's start with Phil. The one really, really positive thing about Tim is that he married Deborah Stapp. Uh, I know her parents and what kind of a family she came from. Um, and I should say that, that the story of John the Baptist and Herod Antipas is a perfectly good example of hearing, not hearing what you want to hear. Um, Antipas, of course, was a, was a tetrarch and was surrounded by people who told him what he wanted to hear. But the Baptist was a person who told him what he didn't want to hear. And it seems as though Herod liked the fresh breath that came from John the Baptist. He was simply outmaneuvered by Herodias, his wife, and her daughter <clears throat> into taking the Baptist's life. But it looks like Antipas liked the fresh air of John the Baptist yelling at him over his marriage. Uh, situation. So, um, about Lincoln, I loved his presentation. I'm glad ancient scripture hired him. Uh, I was not around when that happened. Let me just say one more thing about Lincoln, uh, and I'll leave his presentation alone. He throws a tight spiral. He was the starting quarterback for the University of Calgary football team when he was a student. So, He's more than meets the eye. Okay. All right. So um, with Julie, she landed on the passage in Luke chapter 7 where the sinner woman comes in off the street. Jesus is in this, uh, in, in this dinner party with uh, Simon and his curious friends uh, who are sort of looking over this guy to see what he's like. The, the issue, the difference between the Markan story in chapter 14 and Luke's story, I think has to do with where the anointing is received. In Mark's story, Mark says specifically that, that the woman anoints Jesus' head. In, in Luke's version of this, of this account, she anoints his feet. Um, now, we saw up here the portrait of everyone sitting around where the woman was pouring the, the ointment on Jesus' head. That probably is not the scene we should see. Instead, we should see a, a scene inside of a room where there is a U-shaped table that sits maybe four to eight inches off the off the off the floor, there are pillows and mats around where people have reclined. Hence, to get to Jesus' head uh, is is a problem, and I don't have to deal with that because only Mark preserves that story. What Luke preserves is a story about a woman anointing his feet, which are stuck out away from the table easily accessible. That's why Jesus can anoint or wash the feet of the disciples at the Last Supper. And, and the feet become key. It, the feet become a symbol in, in Luke's story. Uh, Jesus says, I came in, Simon, and um, you, you didn't wash my feet, which is which common courtesy. Um, and you didn't anoint my head, but this woman has been anointing my feet, and so on. The, the focus on the feet has to do with the instrument by which I walk in the path of life. You see it again and again and again in the Old Testament, that the foot is the thing which takes me either into the path of sin or into the path of righteousness. And when I repent, I turn my path, which is, which is engaging my feet to go in a different direction. And I see the stories as having a rich overlay of symbolism because this woman is changing her life. She is repenting and her path will go in a different direction. It's the only story in Luke that I see which has this overlay of symbol across it. 
And therefore, I'm thinking, I'd, uh, because otherwise Luke doesn't go for symbolic actions, except incidentally, I'm thinking that it's not Luke's creation. It has come to him from a source, from somebody who knew of what happened, and therefore he's not responsible for its for its form, or at least not the 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 bulk of its form, and therefore I don't see the two stories as being the same. Um, but I liked her discussion. If she'd walked past me, I would have given her a high five. Um, that one one minute left. <clears throat> Stephen Webb said something about about family that I picked up strands that had to do with family here and there in Luke's Luke's presentation. There's always a question whether I create, that is, I see something that I want to see there because I'm a Latter-day Saint commentator, I'm a Latter-day Saint student, and so family is important to me. Uh, but I think I think I got it right that that in fact the concern and interest for the family is genuine and it grows out of Jesus and it rises in large part because of his own family experience with his parents, with his siblings, and so on. Um, I loved Eric's uh, Eric's uh, comment. Let me just say one thing about the scene, two things about the scene with the Gadarene, as he's called, Gadarene demoniac, probably kerosene or kerosene demoniac. I actually have looked along the east shore of the Sea of Galilee where the most natural place is for those pigs to run into the water. <clears throat> it's just to the north of En Geb, right? Just as you go through the roundabout and hit, that's the steepest place, and the water is the steepest there. <clears throat> so they'll drown. Um, that Luke is the only one who, writing about the, the windstorm that precedes this scene as coming down. The other, the other accounts, Mark and Matthew, say that the wind kicked up. But Luke is the only one, I think, who's walked into the bowl which surrounds the Sea of Galilee and sees that when winds blow, they blow down onto the lake. That's how he describes it. Second point. Most commentators believe that as Luke, uh, that as Jesus retreats from here, he does so as a failure. He went into Gentile territory. His first attempt to reach across the divide from Jew to Gentile and, and make some kind of inroad. Instead, the people who are scandalized by what he's done ask him to leave. <clears throat> what we don't see is that Jesus leaves behind the man who's been healed. And he's told him, tell your friends and neighbors what great things God has done for you. So here's this guy who never shuts up. And he's talking to his family. He's talking to former acquaintances. He's talking to people in this village and into that village and so on. Then a few months later, here come the 17 who have had food laws suspended so that they can go into Gentile territory. This man, by himself, creates the soft spot in, among Gentiles on the east side of the lake where, where Jesus' 70 disciples will receive a good hearing. <clears throat> it's just that People didn't see the strategy uh, of the coming of the of the seventy, who, according to D DNC one hundred and seven, have a special calling to the Gentile nations of the earth. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very, very much.